In today's video, I'm going to show you how I painted these dolphins and made them look like they're actually in the water. So without further ado, let's get on with it. Before I put any details in, I like to get my background in first. I'm using two different colours on the first layer. And once I've put those down, I'm blending out any um, brush strokes with a blending brush and then drying with a hairdryer before I add my second layer, which has got more colours in it, blending from darker through to lighter. It's important to get your background in before any details with acrylic because acrylic dries so, so quickly. Um, give yourself less work to do. It makes your life so much easier. And just build up the layers and the colours gradually. And say, and using a blusher brush or a mop brush to get rid of any brush strokes to give a much smoother finish. I then like to just, I'm just darkening up the edges um, with my airbrush, but you don't have to use an airbrush. Just make sure every layer you do is absolutely dry before you add another one, otherwise you're going to lift paint off. I wanted to add some sunlight ripples at the top, so in a semicircle motion I'm using sort of squiggly lines to add those and I felt they were a bit bright and I'd done too many. So I'll go over them with a glaze of the colour that I've used in the top, in the water. I'll do that over it once it's completely dry to just push it back again and make it look like it's in part of the water. Now it's time to add in my dolphins. I'm using tracing paper. I'd already drawn my dolphins out. And so I'm using tracing paper and white transfer paper to move my original sketch onto my canvas. I'm now using a mixture of black and white with a little bit of phthalo blue in with it um, to block in the back dolphin. I'm trying to work from what's furthest back to what's furthest, what's forward. Um, to make my life a bit easier because if I put the uh, the big dolphin in first then I'd have to worry about making sure I don't go over the lines or anything whereas if I'm doing that after I've done this first one it makes life a bit easier. Now really I should have done the second dolphin at the back next but I decided to do that one and the front one together for some reason and I hadn't realised I've missed a fin out on the little dolphin at the back so I'll be adding that in again later. So I'm just blocking them in and then drying that layer and I can see where all my lines were because of my brush strokes. And as I work in again on the back dolphin, I've tried to push it back in the water by glazing over some of the background colour. It's a really watered down version of that colour to push it back. But I wasn't happy with it, so I will go over. What this video is mainly going to show you is that it doesn't matter if you don't get it right first time. You can keep on layering until it looks like it wants like you want it to rather. Um, so I was just playing really trying to work out how I was going to do these dolphins. I've not painted dolphins before so I was experimenting and that's all art is really, uh, one big experiment. Keep working until you're happy with how it looks. I'm working wet on wet on this bit here and then just blending with my brush or brush just to get rid of any brush strokes. I'm not trying to blend with that brush, I'm just getting rid of brush, stroke, brush strokes. So back on this back dolphin now, I'll go back to him numerous times. I'm flitting between the two because I'm waiting for one to dry before I go back to the, the um, front one. So I'm now happy with my base layers and I'm going back over and adding all the little details with my transfer paper. That's why it's a really good way of transferring your pictures onto your canvas um, by tracing them. Once you've done your drawing, tracing them onto trace, drawing them onto tracing paper and then tracing them down, it means that you can keep that tracing paper until the very end. So if you need to go back over any details, you can do um, without creating far too much work for yourself. So back again on this back dolphin, I'm just making sure again, blocking in the darks, blocking in the lights, um, making sure everything's as I want it, building up those layers. And I think I go over this back dolphin um, about three or four times before I'm happy with what I've done with him. And say so I've tried to push him back in the back again, and I made him too blue. So dry him off and layer again. So back over with my lights, back over with my darks. It's a bit monotonous when you've got it wrong. Of course, you'd like to get it right straight away, but we're not perfect. And as long as the end result's what you want it to be, it doesn't matter how you get there, in my opinion anyway. 
So again, adding in the de small details with liner brushes and small fill book brushes. And I was working wet on dry then, so I was blending out with a sort of slightly damp brush. So adding my colour and then slightly damp brush, just blending out um, the harsh lines. So adding the shadows in and the darks in for this second um, dolphin at the back. And just paying attention to my reference photo and say build it up slowly. So add a bit of colour, I blend it out if it's a bit harsh. If I blend it wrong, I just paint over it. And that's literally all there is to this. Um, an important thing when you are painting things underwater, I learnt with this one, is that um, you want to make it look like they're in the water, not like you've just painted them on top of a water background. And to make them look like they're in the water, it's important to incorporate some of the water colour or the, some of the colour of the water into those dolphins. If you don't, they're not going to look like they're a part of the painting. So as the um, smaller dolphins are further back, they're a little bit less detailed. And I've come um, over with a blue glaze using the colours in the background to glaze over those. And because a glaze is so watered down, you just use your colour that you've used in the water, but you really water it down and then paint it over the areas that you want um, to push back. And that's how I've made them start to look like they're a part of that water and part of that picture. That's another glaze going over there, that dolphin. I've gone a bit messy there, but it's so watered down, it didn't really matter. You can't really tell that it's um, gone over those lines. And I will tidy things up later on. At the moment, I'm just interested in getting my um, lights and darks in and um, pushing those dolphins back in the um, painting. So by pushing them back, I mean pushing, making them look like they're further away. And that's really all there is to all of them, really. It's just keep going, keep on layering. Um, where I've not been happy with how far back things were pushed, I bring up my highlights again. I'm never working with pure white. I've always, it's always with these, it was always a very light grey with a little bit of that blue from the background mixed in with it. Um, I don't want completely um, grey or completely white, sorry. I don't want completely white or completely grey because I want them to look like they're in that water. Um, the only time I'm going to use pure titanium white is towards the end when I'm adding like final, final um, highlights to certain areas. And even there, then in this, it's um, mainly still got a tiny bit of that blue in there. So building up now my main dolphin. Um, lights and darks again. I'm trying to work out where I want my shadows, where I want my lights. And when my brush strokes are looking messy, I'm blending those bl brush strokes out with that blusher brush. Um, it's important to keep that brush dry. It needs to be a very dry brush when you're doing that. Um, I'm still getting a hang of the technique um, myself, but um, the paint needs to be sort of slightly drying, but not too dry. And the brush itself needs to be clean and dry. If it's even slightly wet, you're going to create brush strokes, which is not what you want. But that's just practice. I say I'm still getting the hang of it myself. But the more we paint, the better we get, the more we'll get there. These videos are never me telling you how to do things. These are me showing you sort of the techniques that I'm learning along the way on my painting journey. So again, building up the, you see it's a grey, but it's got a lot of blue in it. I'm never quite sure of the exact colour I'm going to use. Um, I slap on what I think is roughly near-ish where I want it to be, and then I'll build it up and um, add glazes on until it's the right colour a bit later on. So initially, I'm just wanting my lights and my darks and my shadows to all be in the right place. And if I mess it up, I just paint over it. Um, so you, good thing about acrylics, acrylics dry quickly, get your hairdryer out, dry that layer off and then paint over it again. I'm sorry, my big head in that picture then because I'm professional. Again, now adding a blue glaze over it again. That's just phthalo blue, I believe, with a lot of water just to try and make that dolphin look like it's a part of the scene, a part of the painting rather than just a sticker. 
So building back up over in my details now, once again. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of artists would have done this in like one or two layers, but I tend to work in quite a lot of layers, partly because I'm not all that experienced, but also with, with um, acrylic paint, but also because I like a lot of layers. A lot of layers give you an awful lot of details that you didn't mean to add, and the light kind of refracts through it and gives it an awful lot more depth um, to your finished piece. Um, I think it looks an awful lot better when you work in layers, but that's just personal preference and personal opinion. Um, but I like how my paintings have been turning out using this technique, so that's what I'm doing. I'm now starting to add a bit more of the detail in. I've got my uh, rigger brush, so liner brush, also called a rigger brush. I'm just using, it's not straight black, it looks like it is, but it's not, it's... Um, it is black, but it's got um, phthalo blue mixed in with it as well. And I'm just tidying up um, with some turquoise as well, just around those the um, snout of that um, back dolphin and tidying up some lines here and there, and adding highlights here and there, just neating things up now and adding some more form to the dolphin. Notice when I'm adding like highlights to the dolphin I'm never adding straight lines I'm always adding curves because he's a 3D shape so it's important to remember that you're trying to make him look 3D and the dolphin's body would be curved and so that's what you need to do. I'm adding in final highlights now paying attention to where the ripples from the um, water would be reflecting onto the dolphin's skin so I'm using my rigger brush to achieve this with a watered down uh, titanium white. It needs to be watered down to make it um, flow smoothly with your brush. I'm then going to go up to the water again once I've drawn those in and add the extra sparkle and some extra highlights to the water rippling at the top. And then to finish off the water, I'm going to dry it off with my hairdryer and I'm going to use my airbrush to add some extra glow to the top of that water and some sunbeams coming down to those dolphins. And that finishes the painting. Thank you all for watching. If you found this video useful, please leave me a thumbs up. I post new content every Thursday. If you don't want to miss anything, please press the subscribe button below. You can also press that bell icon. It makes sure that you get notified by YouTube for all new content I post. That's it from me now. Bye, guys.